how do you deal with people who you come across in your life, whether they're friends, someone you're seeing romantically, so, who have an adverse reaction to you, you know, what they may perceive as disappearing or ghosting or whatever, and they come to you with that adverse reaction. Do you, it, what's your strategy for dealing with that situation? It's truth. You know, like truth is like you expressing the truth. And sometimes, sometimes the truth is like, you know what? Like, I really wasn't thinking about it from your perspective. Like, I can do better. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the truth is like, man, I just got so much going on. Like, you know, I love you always. Like, but don't stress if I, if I don't get back to you. So you just kind of mm. set the clear truth of what, what is possible. But it's really I tricky. Like both those answers. By yeah, the way. it's really know. tricky in romantic relationships because I could be having a great day and I could be interested in somebody, you know, because I'm fully single now and seeing different people, and it could be somebody that I'm interested in seeing, and they don't get back to me for a day, and I'm start, I'm, I'm like bummed out the whole day, yeah. you know, <laughs> like everything yeah. else is fucking great. The sun <laughs> is shining, like things are good, yeah. but so and so hasn't texted me back. I wonder if she doesn't like me anymore. Oh man, maybe that's because she found somebody that's better than me. And right. oh, well, you know, maybe I'm just not that cool after yeah. all. Or like maybe I wasn't that good in bed last time. Yeah. Maybe she found somebody who's better. And you start going through these whole mental patterns, and then you know, and usually like two days later, be like, hey, what's up? Like, how you doing? <laughs> You know, but if you, if you go, and this is, I'm sure something that you, you teach and talk about, like you over pursue that, you're actually going to drive that person away. Yeah. Just like put it out there and like, let them have their time and their space and just trust and hold and like believe in your own self-worth. And if they want to go some other direction, that's cool. I think one of the things that's, you know, it's an interesting difference between being single and being in a relationship is that. If you're single and you feel that lack of attention, you're like, you know, you want your drug, you want your fix, you want your, like, that person's not complimented me today. They haven't responded to me today. They, did, they haven't called me. They didn't ask me to go out again or whatever. When you're single, and, and it, of course it depends on the nature of you in a relationship, whether you're in a monogamous relationship, open relationship, whatever. But when you're single, you could go get your drugs elsewhere. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, they didn't text me back. Let me text three other people. <laughs> like there's a, there's a sense of like, yeah. you can be that, you can go crazy and people don't even realize you're going crazy. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like you, people don't realize what an addict you are yeah. until all of a sudden you're expected to be in an actual relationship. Yeah where it's not someone's not just gonna be there every five minutes to give you your drug and if they don't it may not be appropriate to go and get it off here over <laughs> here right so now you're you know i've been in relationships before where i realized i'm a oh wow i'm a i'm a drug addict like yeah, this that's is a, that's the signature of codependency to right. a certain degree you're uh, dependent upon a certain level of attention affection yeah. love validation that you get from one source so in some ways like outsourcing that is actually a, is a safe way to release that dependency but it also can rob you of the depth of connection that you can get in right. that in that truly intimate relationship right. but it's it's a delicate dance because ideally you want to be fully in love and fully present but also not attached do you have any kind of barometer because i think what a lot of people struggle with and i've struggled with in the past is okay there's this where i'm in a relationship i want this much attention on one side of that is i have an issue i need to fix this I need attention way too much, way too often. I'm looking for someone else to make me feel good, to validate me, to make me feel whole, to make me feel connected and so on. On the other side of that is I'm a human being with needs who wants to feel connected and what's the point in even having a relationship if I'm feeling disconnected so often? Mm. And I think what, what well, I know, especially because a lot of people ask me this, what a lot of people struggle with is Am I the one with the issue in how much I'm asking for? Or is this person genuinely not meeting my needs at an appropriate level hmm. with what they're doing? Hmm. Which is true. And I think that when you're close to a relationship because it's your own, that can be really, really difficult to answer. 
it's uh it's about i think trusting trusting the boundary that you set you know like it would it would be nice to have the divine perspective of non-attachment and you know i really started to understand what that divine perspective is it was like the loving a perspectival witness where you're just like i'm loving you exactly as you are Mm -hmm. and whatever your journey is is fucking beautiful but then there's also the human part of it which is things hurt and there's boundaries and there's things that you would want in a relationship so it's a delicate dance of expressing that i love you exactly as you are but here are the boundaries like and the boundaries are if we're in a relationship we need to spend connected present time Mm. together Mm. and so if we're together and we're doing something phones are gone like we're not on them you know and we're going to go do things that are not just the typical routine things we're going to go do some breathing or do some meditation or do do the things that like bonded all of us together in poland right Mm. but I mean, it might not be the cold with your with your lover. It might not be the plant medicine. It might not be this thing. But you have to find something that's going to get you access to that higher part of yourself where the real connection and like that real part is yeah. there. And I think that's an area that, you know, I've struggled with myself because I'll chase I'll chase what I think somebody wants. So like a girl that I'm with will want to party and I'll be like, And they'll be partying with somebody else. And I'll be like, oh, you're partying with him? I'll show you a fucking party. (laughs) You think that's a party? Here's a party. But I don't want to fucking... I'll show you a party. I'll show you a party. (laughs) You call that a party? Call that a knife? (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. That fucking Crocodile Dundee (laughs) moment where you're like, you call that a knife? And it's just like, no, man, stop. (laughs) Fucking stop. And I've started to like rethink my... Like rethink everything. Like what am I really here for? And you're like, what am I... What actually makes me feel good? And, and it, it's, it's about like giving that rather than trying to take anything else or compete for anything else. Mm. And like not chasing that pleasure or not chasing that thing, but being you. And then, you know, I, I, had, a date, I had a date recently. And in that, in that recent date, you know, she was really more comfortable if she was doing something for me, then receiving something from mm. me. So in that moment, I was like, okay, well, what's going to be interesting tonight is if I don't let you do anything for me. And tonight's about you, right? Like, this is way more fucking interesting. Yeah. Cause, and it was like, she was uncomfortable. She was like, <laughs> fuck, that's vulnerable. And like yeah. that, that makes me nervous. And I'm like, perfect. Yeah. Like, great. Like, you have to release. You can release all of that. I'm going to get nothing out of this but actually i'm going to get everything i want which is to be a force that's going to be a benefit to your life right like to help to help give you something so i woke up even though i didn't get to experience the pleasure that i've chased most of my life i got to be a a positive force in this person's life that was made me feel like oh yeah i know what i'm here for i'm here to like bring more up bring more to someone's life not take what i need and have this mutual taking which is like i'll give you this you give me this it's like it's almost transactional nature of relationship right like i'll give you this you give me this we're even but if you can get to that state of like no i'm just i'm just giving and in the giving you have a receiving that's so much richer than i 100 percent agree i the danger of course is that you knowing the right person to give to and i work with a lot of people who they're givers by nature which can be can come from a positive place or not like Mm. there's the people like to own that like it's a very righteous thing like i'm a giver sometimes they're a giver just because they're a generous person Uh, there are plenty of givers who are givers because it's a manipulation for love and you know i just I, that's what I know. We all have our weapons, right? Mm-hmm. Some people's weapons is being the sexiest person in the club. <laughs> like other people's weapon is, I'm going to do more for you than anyone else humanly would. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be a martyr for you in, in your life. That everyone has their weapon and some people get addicted to giving as their weapon, right? Like I, this is the only way I know how to get love. And what probably freaked her out on that date was you took away my weapon. Right. That was my weapon. That's how I know how to get you to like me. <laughs> I might not get, be able to get you to like me if I'm not doing shit for you. Uh-huh. 
now that freaks her out because I got to find a different weapon. Yeah. I and then it's disarming. And then in the disarming is the vulnerability and the, in the disarming completely. is the connection. Now I got to, now I got to rely on who I actually am. Ooh. And that's freaky to people. <laughs> that is. Know, to all of us. So I think the, but, but I have a lot of people who give to people who only take. And I think the key is you got to, you got to find someone who has the same attitude to giving. So as what you, you need to give that person is boundary. You know? That's cool. I like that. So like yeah. you can still be a giver, but it's not this coddling. It's never coddling. You give them what they're, you're, you're, you're attending to their soul. Their whatever word you want to call it. Soul has a lot yeah. of, a lot of like attachment, a lot of barnacles on that word that can mean a lot of things, but you're attending to the higher part of themselves, the part of themselves that wants to learn and grow, not attending to that mm. needy, greedy, egoic aspect and the thing that you you know think might get you what you want in this in this regard you're attending to their soul just like with a kid it, you need to give boundary that's great and that's that's your gift and it's a gift that comes with a sacrifice because you know that if you put that boundary up like hey what you're doing here is taking yeah and so my boundary is, is that i'm not going to be in a situation so i'm going to give this boundary to you wow. and to me and so it, the love that you're actually giving is it's in some ways, you know, a tough, a tougher love. It's yeah. like, I'm not going to give you what your ego wants. I'm going to give you what your soul needs, which and, is to understand boundaries. And a riskier love because you may not be able to handle this. Right. And, you and might it may leave all end. Me. It may all end. You might leave me for your drug. Yeah. Like that might not work for you and you may not be ready for this. And so I might have to sacrifice you in the process of doing both loving you, really loving you, not the fake I'm trying to get attention from you, but actually loving you and giving you what you need, not what you want, mm -hmm. and loving myself enough to have those boundaries. Now I risk losing you. And I think actually you almost always have to be willing to let go. Yeah. You almost always have to be willing to lose that thing to actually get the thing that you really want. You know, it's like you have to, to, win, the, to win the pot you have to push your chips in sometimes, yeah. you know, and sometimes you're going to lose those chips, but that's the, that's the only move that makes sense. You can't just keep playing the game, throwing in one piece at a time. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to push your chips in and that's where you set that boundary saying like, no, 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 these are the, these are the rules of engagement in our relationship. Yeah. And like, that's, that's going to be helpful for you and helpful for them because it's going to make them be aware like, oh, wow. All right. Well, I gotta, I gotta take a look at some things. Yes.